and welcome to Shoreline Music Monthly. My name is Mark Koshwitz. This is episode 79 in our series of shows where we bring you the talented uh, singers and songwriters of the Connecticut scene. Um, as I'm taping right now, it's, uh, we're actually having a spring for the first time in seemingly years. And uh, sadly, that kind of decimated the Merit and Daffodils Festival's music lineup uh, this past weekend. But in the near future, um, this very week, which um, of which we're taping, we have the first Clinton First Thursday. We have uh, the Madison Farm Markets opening this Friday. So by the time this airs, uh, farm markets will be up and running. Outdoor venues are coming back. Um, the shoreline's waking up. And uh, so here we go. <laughs> um, I am very happy to have with me today in the studio uh, a very talented singer and songwriter. Um, her name is Jill Thompson. And uh, we're gonna chat a little bit and you're gonna meet her tonight. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. I'm so glad that we made this happen. We had, a, we had a hiccup or two, yeah. <laughs> but we have got it. Um, I'm glad you found it. Um, so. Uh, just, I guess, to, to let these folks know, um, I'm aware of you. Um, I've heard you play live. I, I listen to your album with some regularity in my house. Um, maybe give these folks a little background. Um, you know, what brought you to music or, you know, did you, did you play as a child? Mm -hmm. Is this a, a later thing? Uh, I'd say music came to me um, as a young young person. Um, started with piano. We always had a piano in the house. There was always music in the house. My mother had a, an eclectic collection of music. My sister's um, older than me, so I got to experience you know the artists of the '60s oh, and nice. uh, yeah, you know the and uh, you know not just your mainstream artists, but you know like Leonard Cohen. Uh, um, Robert Johnson, John Mayall. I mean, my sister had a had good real, taste. <laughs> good, very interesting taste in music. So, were you the uh, youngest in the family? Yes. Oh, nice. So uh, there was always music, and uh, my mother was uh, she was a visual artist, but she also really loved music. And um, so there was Marty Robbins and Patsy Cline. And, I mean, I just heard so many different things. And then as I got up. A little older and had you know a music musical friends um they they turned me on to other things like jazz and um you know different artists of the day and uh, so i mean it just it just always came at me from uh, many many directions uh, now as a as a child did, were, were there actual piano lessons or was there yeah. kind of the music in the house and <laughs> There, kind yeah, of there was an attempt to, for all of us to take lessons, you know, your obligatory Saturday morning lessons <laughs> that we, you know, we, we, we weren't very kind to the, uh, the teacher. Um, so no, the lessons, they didn't take, nah, they didn't really take, but I, I played by ear. And then I, once I started to just sit and, and play, I, I realized how much I really loved, you know, playing and that I could compose things. And uh, so, so you started, uh, you started writing music pretty young. Yeah, then. piano and then uh, guitar. Being left handed, the guitars I had access to were not. And I really didn't realize I did play upside down for a while, but it, it, I felt limited and it, it was frustrating. I really didn't have the uh, I really didn't have anybody that said, you know, you really, let's get you a left-handed guitar. <laughs> so I kind of uh, just did the best I could, you know, playing reverse strings. And uh, but I certainly didn't uh, do the extent of of creating that I have since I've gotten left-handed guitars and uh, learned to to expand on that. So. Upside down, <laughs> that can't really work that well. Yeah, right? it was limited. I mean, I could do a few blues things, you know. C, D, and G was easy to figure out upside down and things like that. But it, like I said, it wasn't really, uh, it kind of, I got discouraged by it. And um, so I don't, honestly, uh, I didn't really start playing a lot of my own 
really writing until probably I was 20 when a friend of mine um, actually gave me a, a left hand guild. Nice. And it's I still have it to this day. Um, so that's when things started opening up. It's like, oh, so this is this is a chord you can play, and you know. Okay, now so were you in any little combos with friends as through this, or were you mostly um, you know writing and 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 performing alone? Yeah, I was solo. Solo. I did some coffee houses back in the uh, '80s. There was there were several places in the Hartford, uh, the cellar door, and some various little venues here and there, but uh, I didn't really stay with it. it yeah, as yeah, as life there. happens. Yeah, I think, it, you was, know. it became more, I, I got to get a job and, uh, you know, but in the mean, I did, it did float in and out and, you know, I'd hang out with musicians and uh, I took some music courses at uh, Greater Hartford Community College before it was capital. So, uh, yeah, it's just always been somewhere in the so you perimeter. Never, you never put it all the way down. But I always wrote, mm -hmm. whether it was, uh, you know, just being contemplative, writing, I've always been a writer, so. Uh, so even prose or poetry? Yeah, or, just, or... just thoughts that, you know, maybe uh, if I had um, formatted them right, the correct way they would be songs, you know, mm -hmm. verse, chorus, verse. But mostly a lot of, I always get a flood of ideas of writing, a pr prolific writer. Are they always songs? No, but I'm always flooded with uh, something to write. Mind is always yeah. working. Well, you took something that didn't belong to you Bring it on back to me I called it love But you rose above it Just to look down on me I was a child But now I'm a woman And I'm looking To be set free I'm vengeful and sweet come at night but you chose the light to make a fool out of me I was naive to the things up your sleeve bring it on back to me I was hard to believe anything that I perceived The goods that you stole wasn't cheap stuff to unload in some back alley. Still, you went on your way after collecting your pay. Bring it on back to me. You committed the crime, instead, I did the time. Who lives this way? safe in my dreams you cut the seams and you come on through I keep a gun by my bed but it's all in my head bring it on back to me
It's been too many years and I hear the tears have no other place to go. So I let them in because it wasn't my sin and I shouldn't be ashamed of those. I was a child, now I'm a woman and I'm looking to be set free. Well, you eventually did get um, yeah. a collection of them yeah. um, that you put down. And I always find that, you know, when they're actually recorded, now they're like static, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, now they're done <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, they may not be because you may, maybe you'll perform them slightly differently when yeah. you play them. But um, what was, what was that all like? That was pretty exciting. Um uh, it was done at the uh, the dirt floor in East Haddam, Eric Lichter, and um, can't go wrong there. It's always a funny story how I found the place because um, I really wasn't looking for a studio; I was looking for a kitten. And <laughs> yeah, I went on Craigslist, <laughs> and for some reason there was his studio came up, and I'm like, gee, oh, a studio in Connecticut. I wonder what that's about. And you know, next thing I know. We're emailing, and I said, you know, I got some songs I might like to do, and, and that's how it developed. But I had no intention of, you know, seeking him out, and um, <laughs> but it just worked. And uh, <laughs> Sometimes the universe wants to tell you something. <laughs> so like, didn't get the kitten, but I got an album. And uh, so, yeah, it did work out. And the songs on that, um, most of them... I hate to refer to the COVID period, but it was, it was during the that time and I bought that little guitar and I was living in a another guild right yeah the little westerly collection and um, I was living out in a very secluded place so it, the pandemic really didn't phase me I was already isolated that's how I lived it, it just didn't uh, phase me all this was going on and um, and I did a lot of writing so I pretty much wrote most of everything during that period oh wow yeah maybe a year year and a half wow so, the, so they're all the, recent vintage and yeah because i know we, we mentioned you had been writing for years so yeah. there's there's still a lot more songs we got to get down at some point maybe yeah <laughs> and uh a lot of the songs i wrote um earlier are probably gone now i mean they're just it's not i'm not connected to what i may have written yeah you know, understood. like 10 years ago right but, it, you know, if I look at the lyrics, I go, oh, I really should have done something with that song. But so this is what it is now. And, um, you know, it's inspiring and it seems to flow pretty easily. I don't have a lot of that. I've got to make a living off this or, you know, is it good enough? I don't have a lot of that stuff left. You know, it's just. Now, is there a story behind the name Summertime Child? Uh, just the, the title of the song that I wrote. Okay. So that's that's where that just came from. The, just the yeah, it was a song. It's a song about my, the street I grew up on, mm -hmm. pretty much. Uh, just that a short period of time of growing up and um, remembering summer and how much it, I enjoyed it and it, and it's also it rolls it rolls into so many things because then it becomes a the present place where when I was living in this house I was considering maybe moving because it was a huge house it was a big house and um and th you know like the story will say you know maybe i should move on because it wasn't getting a little bit much the work and upkeep so that song kind of uh it's kind of rolled into all that and then it kind of morphs into well when i was a child walking down my street and that's what kind of happens with the songs is uh they just uh you know they change into so many things and a good example of that is uh, one of the songs on there called uh, Taste for Blood, which mm. I wrote at in Middletown. That's where the house was uh, after um, I had coyotes running through the yard. And they, they took it. One took a deer down. 
And so that's how that song began. And then it morphed into... And yet it seems to be about so much more. Yeah, and then it morphed into a relationship kind of a, you know, uh, personality or something. So, yeah, they, they're never like... It's rare that one is going to go right straight down the pike and uh, be exactly what the idea is. It, it's They're a little abstract, but not really abstract. Yeah. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that way. <laughs> Folks, I am still here with Jill Thompson, and she has agreed to play From the Hip with me, that uh, little piece of the interview where the questions are just a little more random, and 
we'll see what happens, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can just always claim the fifth, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you know, it's, it's like that old Talking Heads uh, album. It's, it's basically more songs about buildings and food. It's really, <laughs> there's really not a lot. Of, it's not all that crazy. Um, who would you say is your favorite singer that you don't know personally? That I don't know personally? Well, I'm always asking musicians, you know, I can't have so them <laughs> picking a best friend over another best friend. So. You mean a famous person? Yeah, anybody. Because I would, wouldn't know it. As long as you don't know them. Oh, Sean Colvin. Oh, go with her first. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't don't go wrong her. there. <laughs> now, um, we were just uh, walking past the crew pie a little while ago, mm. which made me wonder if what your thoughts of... Uh, should pineapple ever be on a pizza? No. Okay. I don't think it should ever be warm. <laughs> no, right? I really don't. It shouldn't be on like a pizza. Like raisins should, be raisins should never be warm either. All right. My, my wife is with you on that one for certain. <laughs> um, uh, what would you say of all the music you listen to, um, and again, not meaning that any, any music that anyone likes is bad music, mm. what would you say is a guilty pleasure of yours? Musically? Yes. Oh, geez. I don't know how to... I don't know why I would consider it a guilty. Though. Right. You what know, does that mean? Well, it, like, I grew up on Kiss. I still listen to that. Oh, okay. I mean, Something like that. Oh, so... That may, you know, like, other um, people would look down their nose at that. I do not, but... Hmm. You know what I mean? That, that kind of thing. You know, if you're spinning oh, Saturday oh, Night oh, Live oh. soundtrack on Saturday nights or, you know... I love Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I don't know. Does that, don't, does that work? Uh, you no, know. I don't think so, but that's okay. You know? <laughs> Not everyone has a guilty play. I grew up with you know, listening to lots guilty, of crazy though. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> when I listen to it. Music's music. Yeah. Um, do you recall uh, what the first music that you purchased uh, with your own money? Oh. It was probably either a Joni Mitchell album or an Elton John, but I'm pretty sure it was Joni Mitchell. Joni? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. That could absolutely be. Yeah. Um, do you remember the last time you were on a roller coaster? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like a year ago. Well, good well, for you. And that's why we say it's the last time I was on a roll. It was Will at Quasi. It? it was Quasi Park. That mm. little thunder thing yep, they call yep, it. Yep. That thing threw me around. I I, I saw my <laughs> life flash. I could have sworn the old it was ones bang you around. <laughs> I could see myself getting catapulted out of that, and uh, I wasn't right the rest of the day. <laughs> Might have been a week. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> uh, how many uh, states have you lived in? Um, maybe three. Okay. Yeah. Would you tell me what they were? Uh, Florida, Georgia, and uh, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> I had to think about the last one. Good. <laughs> uh, temporarily, California. Yeah I, I have, yeah, I lived there. I mean, it wasn't a long time. In Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah, Cape. So, yeah. You didn't about say how long. You just nope. lived there. No. Nope. So. Okay. It's just, I mean, I just asked random yeah. things that I'm just curious about, which but yeah. wouldn't necessarily come up in a normal interview. Yeah, yeah. we lived in Florida as a family for a while, Pensacola. Mm. It was beautiful back then. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, well, thank you for playing. Yeah, it was fun. Um, Ms. Thompson, um, if she is playing anywhere, you can find that information on Shoreline Music Monthly's Weekend Guide, which we put up every Tuesday-ish for the following weekend. Um, so don't forget to find us on Facebook and check out the weekend guide if you want to track this young lady down. And uh, thank you for playing my game. Thank you. <laughs> Red tail lights and then you're gone 
Autumn leaves that turn to red The color I felt after what you said the Threads from your shirt on the bed Everywhere I look there's something red Red wine stains on the floor Red paint chipping off the front door always keeping score I never noticed so much red before Red lips pressed against your cheek Red flames rising from the heat The promises we couldn't keep The red house we bought at the end of the street Red roses in a vase Walking around in a daze I guess that's just the way life plays Good things come But they don't stay Well, with anything else, you know, so. flying color all by itself. I'm packing up one last shelf. I don't need anybody's help. You always said red look good on me, but at least on one thing we agree. And I hope the same is true. As I wave goodbye